Hi, uh, good afternoon. As you can see, we had a bit of a change of plans. Uh, the Secretary General now will be uh, delivering his remarks at 3 o'clock on the General Assembly um, as they formally adopt his reform, his proposal to reform the UN development system, but he will not be doing a stakeout, so we're now doing the briefing. Uh, during his remarks, the Secretary General, who just returned from Mali uh, a few minutes ago, in fact, uh, will stress that the reform propose, reforms proposed will place sustainable development at the heart of the United Nations and will help the organization to better support countries in achieving the sustainable development goals and make, make a real difference in people's lives. And I have a senior personnel appointment. Today, the Secretary General is announcing the appointment of Karim Assad Ahmad Khan of, um, of the United Kingdom as the special advisor and head of the investigative team which was established by the Security Council. Uh, the team will support the domestic efforts to hold ISIL Daesh accountable for, co for collecting by collecting, preserving, and storing evidence in Iraq of acts that may amount to war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide committed by terrorist groups in Iraq. Mr. Khan is the first head of the investigative team. He is a barrister and a Queen's counsel in the United Kingdom with more than 25 years of professional experience as an international criminal law and human rights lawyer. More information in my office. And our humanitarian colleagues continue to be concerned about the escalation of violence in Derna, in eastern Libya, where reported air raids and shelling, some in residential areas, as well as heavy ground clashes, are impacting the, Libyan, uh, the civilian population following the prolonged encirclement of the city by the Libyan National Army. Civilian deaths and injuries are reported. The humanitarian situation continues to worsen due to severe shortages of water, medical supplies, and food, impacting about 125,000 people. Urgent uh, humanitarian needs uh, continue to get worse as humanitarian access is uh, limited. Civilians are reportedly prevented from leaving areas in the city where there is active fighting. The United Nations again calls on parties to the conflict to allow civilians who wish to leave to do so. The UN also calls on the parties to immediately enable safe, unimpeded humanitarian access and to follow their obligations under international humanitarian and human rights law. And our humanitarian colleagues are worried uh, for the safety and protection of some 130,000 people who have been displaced from Syria's Afrin district to Tal Rafat and surrounding areas following hostilities that began on the 20th of January. The UN continues to provide humanitarian assistance to those who are displaced, including food, nutrition, shelter, water, sanitation, hygiene, and protection services. Despite continuing restrictions on the movement of displaced people, beyond the area where the displacement sites are between 20 and 25th of May. An estimated 30,000 people, excuse me, an estimated 3,000 people were reportedly able to return to Afrin. Nearly 200 people who attempted to return during this period, however, including the elderly, children, and women, are reportedly stranded. They have not been given access to their destinations inside Afrin, nor are they allowed to return to the displacement sites. The UN calls on all parties to the conflict and those with influence over them to protect civilians and civilian infrastructure and to ensure freedom of movement and to allow for safe, sustained, and unhindered access by all, humani by all um, humanitarian parties to those in need. <clears throat> Yesterday afternoon, the UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, Nikolai Mladenov, briefed the Security Council by video conference. He told Council members that the previous two days had seen the most serious escalation since the 2014 conflict between Hamas and Israel, and warning to all uh, how close to the brink of war we are every day. He called on the international community to join him unequivocally condemning the indiscriminate uh, targeting of civilians and their dangerous escalation in Gaza. Mr. Blanoff welcomed the efforts of Egypt to ensure that calm prevails and reiterated his call on all sides to uphold understandings and prevent recurrences of any incidents that jeopardize the lives of Palestinians and Israelis alike. <clears throat> he said that it is imperative that the spirit of calm be preserved at all costs. No one in Gaza can afford another war, he said. And uh, our colleagues from the International Labor Organization have released a report today that says that unemployment rate in the occupied Palestinian territory is now the highest in the world, peaking at 
2.4% in 2017. Women and youth are particularly affected, with almost half of women being unemployed. And um, today is, do you know what day today is? Uh, you're all, you're all, none of you win. Today is World No Tobacco Day. This year, the World Health Organization has partnered with the World Health Heart Federation, highlighting the link between tobacco and cardiovascular diseases, which are the world's leading cause of death, responsible for 17.9 deaths and million deaths annually. Tomorrow, Ambassador Vasily Nembenzia of the Russian Federation and will be here to brief you at 1.30 p.m. as President of the Security Council for the beautiful month of June, and uh, so that's 1.30 on the Council's program. Tomorrow, also, we have quite a few activities related to International Peacekeepers Day, which will be celebrated uh, here at headquarters. The Secretary General will mark the occasion at 9.30 in the morning by laying a wreath in honor of the fallen peacekeepers at the Peacekeepers Memorial Site, which is all the way up in the north, uh, the north part of the North Lawn. He will then preside over an event which begins at 10 a.m. in the Ecosoc Chamber, where Dag Hammarskjöld medals will be posthumously awarded to UN personnel who fell while serving under the UN flag last year. And the Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping um, Operations and Field Support, Jean-Pierre Lacroix Natuakare, uh, will be our guests at noon to uh, brief you on uh, the day and highlight the work that our peacekeepers do around the world and have been doing so for the last 70 years. And lastly, today we say thank you to our very good friends in Ulaanbaatar as Mongolia has joined the honor roll, bringing it up to 102. Yalla. Thank you, distinguished uh, one. On this uh, briefing given by the uh, UN uh, Special Mr. Mike Moldenow about uh, Gaza, in which he said Gaza is on the brink of a war, and now it, it has this, the reason why I'm asking this question is that he, he said that Gaza is on the brink of war, pitted against Israel, which has overwhelming uh, firepower as against. But what, what, what is the question? Uh, the question is, has the Secretary General talked to the Israeli authorities about bringing down the tension? Has he talked I think to the, the to? Uh, contacts have been had at uh, various levels, and Mr. Mladenov and his team are deeply involved. Yes, has, he talk, has he talked to the, the Prime Minister? Uh, I, as you, I said, contacts have been had at, at various can levels. Can you give yes, us sir. any details? It, no. Thank you, Mr. Stephen. On Bangladesh, the uh, situation is very alarming. In the last 16 days, 125 people have been victims of extrajudicial killing by the law enforcement agency in the name of the drug control. Many of them are innocent according to local and international media report. Ruling Prime Minister has said her drive uh, will continue, the so-called you know, anti-drug drive, but the, her special envoy and former military director, General so, Lesha, said... I, 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 thank you for the yeah. facts, what, what are the, for the information. What is the question? My question is how you are observing this horrific situation. Already 125 people died within 16 days. Mm -hmm. uh, let, I don't have any language on Bangladesh right now, but I may get something in time for tomorrow. Uh, yes, sir. Um, this is a follow-up, and uh, I'm asking for a friend, actually. Is the Secretary General uh, equipped to create or at least suggest ideas for creating a mechanism to protect Palestinians from Israeli aggression? We know that that language, uh, I think, is in some of the draft resolutions have been circulated. Uh, as always, we will abide by uh, Security Council resolutions, but um, once they've been adopted. Mr. But ahead, yeah. Sorry. You, you're I, you, it sounded like you wanted to ask for another friend, another question. Yeah. No, but some diplomats have said that what this, these proposals, uh -huh. since you mentioned them, uh, th uh, th uh, that the problem with these proposals is they're very vague about this kind of protection mechanism, and they basically throw it to the, uh, to, to, to the court of, of the Secretary General. It, and that's why I'm asking whether the Secretary General 
can actually flesh out some kind of well, you know, the, mechanism. A lot like of that. things get thrown at the Secretary General, uh, some with detail, some with less detail. But uh, let's wait till we are made to catch something, and then we will comment on it. Mr. Lee. To ask you a couple, some questions about South Sudan. One is, um, in Ghana, they say that their investigation of the sexual exploitation allegations against the foreign police unit from Ghana that was in Wow, South Sudan, has been completed. Um, they're just waiting for the UN. So I'm just wondering, does the UN have a statement on whether they've yeah, been found? I mean, found? the, the OIOS, uh, OIOS has now completed its, uh, its work on the, uh, its investigation on the, on the incidents, which is, you know, did, uh, um, we're about the uh, Ghanaian Foreign Police Unit operating in, uh, in Wow. Uh, the report uh, established that some individuals of the Foreign Police Unit were involved in transactional sex which the United Nations has a zero tolerance policy in line with existing rules. The report uh, will now be shared with the government of Ghana, which is also, uh, as, as we all know, conducting its own investigation. Uh, and they have pledged to us to take the necessary disciplinary and or criminal action for substantiated acts. The contingent of the 46 uh, police officers was repatriated to Ghana on May 30th. Uh, as you know, um, back in February, when these uh, allegations came to light, uh, the Special Representative Secretary General uh, in South Sudan took quick action and removed the unit uh, to Wau, from Wau and confined them to, uh, to barracks uh, in, um, in Juba. Uh, we will be obviously following up with the, um, uh, with the Guinean authorities on the accountability of those who were found responsible for these acts after uh, due process. Oh, first of all, thanks a lot. I'm, I'm glad I asked. What's, what's the protocol for announcing the such results? Were these going to be announced at some later date? Yeah, I mean, they, you know, we, we often share these responses proactively. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems like there was uh, a leak in the, in, in, the, in the communications. We haven't formally uh, shared the report yet with the, uh, with the Canadians, but obviously actions were taken, and, I mean, we have nothing to... Uh, uh, nothing to hide in this case. So how many of the 46 were found to have been involved in wrongdoing? Uh, some individual. I don't have any more uh, detail, but as you know, the unit was treated, uh, was treated as a whole. Sure. Yeah. The other one I wanted to ask you about is, is I th asked you before about Radio Maria and mm -hmm. the, the government saying mm -hmm. that they needed to register. Mm -hmm. And I think it was said here that it was resolved, but it doesn't seem to have been resolved. In fact, it seems like one of the Radio Maria journalists has been arrested by the government, Martin Sani for covering a government uh, uh, event. Yeah, we understand that the, the, the journalist was, uh, was detained and then, uh, and then released. But is this, are you saying again that it's solved or is it going well, to? We, we continue, we're continuing to broadcast. Right, but uh, can you attend I mean, obvi obvi and cover obvi government Obviously, government uh, you know, the government is doing what it's doing, but we're continuing to broadcast. Masood. Thank you, sir. On this uh, situation in Yemen, uh, do you have any updates, and do you know that how many people have uh, been killed since, and then has the Saudi Arabian, I mean, responded to Secretary plea for a ceasefire? You know, we are continuing to... Uh to follow the situation, especially uh, around Hodeida. Uh, we've been told by our humanitarian colleagues who are giving us updates uh, that armed clashes backed by airstrikes are continuing uh, along the Hodeida coastline. As of yesterday, the co uh, conflict incidents were being reported at uh, Durahimi and uh, Altuya districts. Since May 12th, an estimated 750 households have fled military operations, mostly into neighboring areas. People living in these areas appear to be mainly to relocate within the same districts before returning to their villages once the violence has subsided. Humanitarian partners in Aden and uh, Hudaydah hubs have ramped up assistance to accessible areas along the West Coast, and obviously we're updating our contingency plans uh, on a daily basis. The continuing reports of fighting uh, are obviously extremely uh, concerning to, and would only add to an already uh, disastrous humanitarian situation in the area. Okay, so what about this uh, uh, Rohingya tragedy and um, most of the refugees from from Burma or Rohingya area are still in, living in Bangladesh, Cox's Bazaar, and so forth. 
do you have any update as to when will they be ready? When will they? Can they be repatriated? When will well, they be ready to be well, repatriated? You know, obviously, the choice to return belongs to the individual. People need to be able to return home in a way that's dignified, that respects their 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 rights, and they're allowed, they should be able to return to their homes. Discussions are, are ongoing to, pr to kind of create a framework uh, between various UN agencies uh, and the two governments at hand, but I have nothing to announce at this point. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Stephen. On Bangladesh again, as you know, the main opposition leader is in prison, mm -hmm. and she got the bail, but unfortunately, government did not release her. They, rather, they filed three new cases. Now, her health condition is very alarming. Her party secretary general said she's staying in an isolated room with shortage of electricity and provided low quality of food. So her party secretary general yesterday told in a press conference her health condition. So what, how secretary general is looking on these uh, issues? We are, you know, we've, we've expressed our concern of the situation in the past, and I will try to get you an update for tomorrow. Mr. Lee. Sure. Uh, maybe I'm hoping you have another uh, if asked on this one. It's, it has to do with the the Austrian peacekeepers that were in the Golan Heights yeah. in 2012 when the, the Syrian police were ambushed and, and killed. It seems like it's, they're now reporting in Austria that the Austrian defense ministry knew there's a letter dated 9 October 2012 in which they were informed right. of it. Right. But this letter seems to refer to some kind of a conflict between the UN command and the Austrian peacekeepers. So I wanted to ask you again about the Look, UN's uh, role. What the, did they the, know at the, the time? The secretary general, I think when he was in Vienna, expressed full confidence in the ability of the Austrians to, to investigate this. Uh, my understanding, as far as I recall, we would do our own board of inquiry after the Austrian investigation is done. Uh, the incidents uh, were reported to the Security Council uh, at the time, and I will leave it at that. I Go wanted ahead. to ask you about this, this thing this afternoon, um, the, the development system yeah. reform. Uh -huh. um, in talking to some some people on the, I guess, the Fifth Committee, mm -hmm. uh, they said that it's, str it's strange, and maybe they're, maybe they're wrong, but I wanted to ask you, that there's no program budget implication, PBI, filed in connection with this pretty ma major proposal. Mm -hmm. Like, even for the, the envoy on Myanmar, there had to be a PBI, that's why right. it got, so why is it, how can it well, be I mean, I think everything big, was, have was, neg was negotiated tag? with the, uh, with the, uh, with the Fifth Committee, and I think they got all the documents they needed. But it's thank not you. just the documents. It's who's going to pay for the system? Who's paying for it? 